This is Sequoia National Park. In a world filled with cities and towns and urban crawl, it exists as one of the many national parks in the United States. This place, outside of the small changes we made to it to make it more traversable for humans, is almost entirely natural. Nature is a name we give to places not touched by humans. It's the default state of our planet, but as people who have built civilizations, we don't often live in it anymore. If humans never existed, the entire world might still look something like this. This is a Trackmania map called Spaghetti. These two things have a lot in common. Trackmania is an arcade racing game featuring many styles, surfaces, big jumps, tricks, and glitches, and this map has basically none of that. It's a game about precision and intuitive understanding of racing lines and deep knowledge about the game. This map doesn't have any of that either. It is nearly two hours long, has 700 checkpoints, and breaks every single unofficial rule of the game, and it is my favorite map in Trackmania. This video is about why. I spent a lot of time as a kid trying to get to places in games I probably shouldn't. Clipping inside of walls in Super Mario Galaxy, climbing out of bounds in Call of Duty, getting on the floor of Maple Treeway in Mario Kart Wii. I talked about the out of bounds already, but when people use that phrase, it actually means two different things. One means the void surrounding the island that is the game world, but the other just means traveling outside of the playable area. Many games have surprisingly vast out-of-bounds areas, often holding easter eggs or artifacts of the game development process. I was compelled to see all of the places that the developers didn't want me to, the awkward skeletons surrounding these games, just barely holding up their facade. Many games have unfinished areas that players can glitch into or hack into the game, and it lets us see a ghost town, a place designed for life but without it. A lot of these glitches are given purpose through speedrunning, the self-imposed challenge of beating a game as fast as possible. What I find fascinating is that it gives a narrative to games that would never exist otherwise, one where the goal is to pick apart the game as much as possible. Discoveries are made, ways to open the walls of the world around you and assert control in ways the developers never wanted. Speedrunning is a meta game, a game on top of a game, and that extra layer brings elements from outside of what the developers intended for you. Good design is thrown out the window, as the things that decide how a speedrun will play are the intricacies of your hitboxes and niche factors of movement, where your death zones are and what spots you might have missed. The game becomes jagged and finicky, borderline impossible at most points and only approachable to those who dedicate hundreds of hours to it. Smash Bros. Melee is an undying community, rested solely on how janky the game is. Many characters are only viable due to weird hitboxes and exploits, infinite combos, or poorly designed moves. The game's limits have been pushed out so hard that it shattered a long time ago, and people have just kept pushing and pushing anyways. These environments turn video games back from a tailored experience to a harsh, unforgiving environment. Frame-perfect tricks and borderline inhuman setups, all to show us just how limited we really are. Success isn't guaranteed, a philosophy that goes directly against most games. Survival games all have their own interpretation of nature, but it's nature designed for you to live in. There's a clear progression system, ways to get stronger and adapt and get shelter, to automate and conquer more and more of the environment. You're only a part of that nature for the first bit of the game, and soon after you become separated from it, most of it being a small obstacle in the way of later game threats. A better take on nature, in my opinion, is found in Rain World, a game stuck in a dystopian future long after the time of humans. You control a slug cat, a little creature that can move and use tools to protect itself from the wildlife. There is not a single point in this game where you are above the nature around you, where the threat it poses is secondary. You don't grow beyond the ecosystem. You are always vulnerable, just one small part of a much greater world. To truly understand Spaghetti, we need to see what an actually good map is like. This is the Thread of Ariadne, a multi-surface track that has been played hundreds of thousands of times. The map is split up into several sections that explore gameplay on all types of different surfaces. Dirt, road, ice, plastic, and even combining all of them together for the last one. While it's not two hours, it's far, far longer than the average Trackmania map at 20 minutes, and the Thread of Ariadne's builders understood this. Each section gives off the feeling of danger, but in a very video gamey sense. Blue Pathways, the section focused on roadblocks, gives the illusion of tight corners and corridors, but it's surprisingly forgiving. The road is wide and well calculated for the speed you have going into it. It cycles between actual road and these massive square platforms that let you take any trajectory you want. 
The open look and smart design of the map makes sure you always know where you're going next, with helpful signs and clear, intentional design in every turn and straight. The ice section, arguably the hardest surface for newcomers, doesn't even give the illusion of danger, changing every turn from will I crash here to will I take a non-optimal line. Every area accounts for the possibility of crashes and gives the player more than enough space, but the penalty for a mistake on the ice surface is much more severe. You lose all friction and speed and stop sliding entirely. For the map designers and new players, it was decided that a mistake here shouldn't destroy the player. No, the ice is dangerous enough. The map itself looks beautiful, too. Every section is themed with cute little structures along the road path like houses and crystals for the ice section and trees and vines for the green plastic. You get to see the real scale of the map as you go along, with monstrous statues in the distance, ones you get closer to with every passing moment. The final section brings everything together, mixing all styles and upping the scale even more, with two massive elevator-like ascents as you get closer and closer to the end. Turn after turn cycles through all the surfaces you got to know, giving one more gesture to the journey before you as you rocket into the finish. It feels like you're in the ruins of an old civilization, one that set traps for anyone who thinks they're worthy of getting to the end. The Threat of Ariadne is definitely in my top 10 for best tracks in the entire game, but Spaghetti is my favorite map of all time. As I said, Spaghetti is two hours long, going from a short film to a movie, and there's a total of 700 checkpoints to collect. The pure length of this map single-handedly unravels what good gameplay is in Trackmania. In any normal track, including the threat of Ariadne, a crash is a big mistake that can almost end the run instantly. On Spaghetti, skill transforms from not crashing to how low your crashes per minute is from how perfect your lines are to if you do it good enough a thousand times in a row. The track is borderline impossible to memorize, so you're always reacting to the obstacles ahead of you instead of planning for it. Just like emergent gameplay, things are thrown in your way by pure accident, chunks of other parts of road nonchalantly merged with each other. You improve not by learning each and every turn, but instead by learning how to think like the mapper. You learn all of his little habits and idiosyncrasies, like how he's a fan of very sharp turns that go on way longer than they should, or his awkward gentle turns that are both too sharp to drive at full speed but too shallow to do in one drift, making you do this weird fluttering thing. You find parts of the map where he got attached to some new idea, like hairpin turns or cute little dropdowns on angled roads. After a few playthroughs, you make little sections of your own in your mind. This one I call the sewers because of the tight, uncomfortable turns cluttered with obstacles hanging near the very bottom of the track. I call this one the NASCAR section because you The habits and genres fall in and out like gradients, seeing some track pieces start to fizzle out with usage, the mapper getting bored or maybe even forgetting about the block temporarily. If you're insane like me and played this map a ton of times, you start to get a spidey sense of certain monuments coming up, giving you the slightest edge to make sure you avoid mistakes like the three hump jump, or the big jump, or the really big jump, or the spike trap. You start to guess more accurately which ramps you need to slow down for, what the mapper wanted to do next, some paranormal sense putting you in sync with them. And it all fucking sucks. My hands hurt by the end of this map. I never get used to those awkward flutter drifts. I still get jump scared by ramps. I am afraid of spaghetti. This map doesn't feel like the ruins of an old civilization dodging traps and gliding through a grand adventure. It feels like the statue in the distance. Some grand work of art not designed to be interacted with. You're driving outside of the playable area. It's an idea someone made, some sadistic idea someone spent an afternoon on for the joke of it existing. It feels like I'm driving on the scribbles of a drawing, like I'm walking through the woods alone at night. This place is not designed for me, I don't exist to it. Any ability to finish it feels incidental, some freak accident. This map feels like nature. When I play Spaghetti, I'm not a player, I'm an explorer. I'm weeding my way through uncharted territory, the ugly and abrasive parts of the world unwelcoming to humans. In these places, nothing is made for you. It's deadly, borderline impossible to traverse, unkind and finicky. You're in the gears of a clock tower, always running the chance of being crushed. That feeling in games is rare and special, and somehow, Spaghetti, this monstrosity of a map, perfectly embodies this feeling to me. It's my favorite map in Trackmania, because it feels like a course not designed to be driven. So maybe I'm like, 
a little insane, but whatever, I'm not stopping until I get the world record. If I do ever manage to get it, I'll export and upload the entire two hour long run to my third channel I have just for Trackmania. By the way, that was me driving both maps in this video. I, I have that purple car. That whole rant being done, thank you and have a nice day. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more of my stuff in the future, please subscribe to this channel. If you want to support me even further, I have a Patreon that pays out only when I release a video. For just $2 a video, you can get a direct link to me and other patrons, a role in my Discord server, any extra content I release, your name at the end of videos, and even a number of goals that I need to fulfill if they're met. If you want to support me, that is the best way to do it. And finally, shout out to my higher tier donors. Jerichode Mendel, Automatic Quail, Choi Mu, Congruent Crib, Lavender, Soda Cat Lou, Tommy the Cat, Willem, Zimborg, Brian Jackson, Gluckle Jug, Lady Mana, Max Simmons, Ribbonaster, Shameful, The 17 Man, The 169, and Euroden. Lots of people, Jesus Christ. That all being said, I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Thank you and have a nice day.